Okay, so today we're going to start talking about stoichiometry uh, and what that means, and we're going to find out uh, it has a lot to do with the mole ratios in the balanced equations that we've been working on for the last couple of days. So uh, all that work that we've been doing is going to be helpful uh, when it comes to stoichiometry. So, a, remember going back to balanced equations, they tell you the relative amount of each substance during a reaction, right? So those coefficients in front of our substances, in front of the reactants and products, they tell you relative amounts in moles of those substances. Okay, so that's just what this is saying right here. Those coefficients that were in front, right, uh, like right here, for example, those represent the mole ratios present during and in the reaction. So the two out here in front of the iron means that you're going to need to have three molecules of fluorine gas uh, in order for this, to re this reaction to occur. Okay, uh, so as it says down below that, it says for every two moles of iron, you need two moles, uh, or excuse me, two moles of FeF3 can be produced. Okay, so if you have two moles of iron at the beginning, right, you can produce two moles of iron 3 fluoride. Okay, uh, and for every three moles of F2, okay, so every three moles of F2 uh, that you use as a reactant, you can produce two moles of iron 3 fluoride. Okay, so that's what those numbers, those coefficients, out front are saying. Okay, so these values here, these are mole ratios. Okay, they tell you sort of how much you've got of each of them. Okay, relative amounts. Okay, uh, we're going to use these actually uh, starting early next week to determine relative amounts uh, in grams as well. So all of our grams to moles and moles to gram conversions using molar mass, uh, that's all going to come back into play. So, Okay, so stoichiometry, uh, if you need a definition of it, uh, here's sort of what it is. It's the study of quantitative relationships between the amounts of reactants used and the amounts of products formed by a chemical reaction. So that's what we were saying on that previous slide, okay, uh, that if you have two moles of iron metal, okay, that can produce two moles of iron 3 fluoride. Okay, so let's put moles over there. All right, uh, it tells you relative amounts, and that all goes back to the coefficients in front of your reactants and products. All right, uh, this is all based on the law of conservation of mass, which is something we talked about earlier this semester. Uh, law of conservation of mass, if you recall, all right, states that the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products. You don't gain or lose mass. Okay, you cannot create or destroy matter. Right? Mass has to remain constant. So that's what all these coefficients up front are helping us out with. It's going to maintain a constant mass. Okay, that's why we balanced all those equations. So... Uh, here is an example, just kind of taking a look at what these mean again. Uh, this time, instead of uh, iron 3 fluoride being produced, we're producing, uh, let's see, this is iron 3 oxide, okay, Fe2O3. So in this reaction, you have four iron atoms, metal iron, reacting with three molecules of oxygen gas, O2, and that yields Fe2O3, which is a solid, and you get two of them. All right. uh, over here, this is kind of what's going on. you got a Bunsen burner uh, that looks like they had some iron flakes or iron shavings 
Uh, and when they heated them up just like that, they immediately oxidized to form Fe2O3. Okay. Uh, but again, what those coefficients out front can tell us all right, are relative amounts of moles. Okay, so uh, for every four moles of iron used in the reaction, you produce two moles of Fe2O3. Okay, that's because you have a four to two ratio. Right, that's that four here and the two here. Okay, so that's again what those coefficients in front of your uh, substances mean in a balanced equation. All right, sort of just kind of thinking about this some more, uh, let's say you had eight moles of iron atoms used, okay, uh, in the reaction. Uh, it's still a four to two ratio. It's still at, right, I mean, really it's a two to one ratio for every, uh, you use twice as much iron as you produce iron three oxide. Uh, but once again, if you use eight moles of iron, instead you'd produce four moles of iron Three oxide Fe2O3. Okay, that's because the ratio is four to two or two to one. Okay, all those coefficients, that's what they mean. Okay, so again, the mole ratios, which is what we were just talking about, uh, those are dealing with the coefficients in front of our substances. Uh, it's the ratio between the numbers of moles of any two substances in a balanced chemical equation. All right. So, uh, down below here, we've got, it looks like some potassium, uh, solid metal potassium reacting with liquid bromine. It's going to produce uh, potassium bromide, which is a salt, KBR. Okay. Uh, and for every two moles of potassium, you have, you need one mole of bromine for this reaction to occur. Okay, so they are going to occur in a specific ratio. Uh, and, they, and because of the uh, coefficients out front, and since we have to occur in that ratio, uh, you can write them as equivalent amounts. Okay, uh, you can write this as either two moles of potassium per one mole of bromine molecules. Or you can write this as one mole of bromine molecules per every two moles of potassium. Either way, it means the same thing. Okay, uh, it's going back to what we learned at the end of the first unit uh, that we did, uh, dealing with conversion factors. Okay, equivalent amounts can be written over each other to help us convert, and this is going to be useful uh, next week. Okay, these this ability to sh change between these two. Okay. They are equivalent amounts. Right? Two moles of potassium would be equivalent to one mole of bromine molecules, uh, but that is only for this reaction, right? only for this reaction. Okay. So, uh, similarly, uh, for every two moles of potassium metal you start with, uh, two moles of potassium bromide is produced. So it, that's produced at a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, two moles of potassium produces two moles of KBr. Okay, so just like we wrote up here uh, with the two potassiums for every one bromine, okay, or one bromine for every two potassiums, you can write the same thing with the reactants and products. Uh, that's fine as well uh, because for every two moles of potassium you have, you're going to produce two moles of KBr so long as you have enough bromine. All right, and so those are reversible. You can write them either way. They're your conversion factor. Okay. All right. Uh, just some more examples here. Uh, we've got two potassiums uh, and adding bromine to it. Liquid bromine produces two uh, potassium bromides, so same equation as before. Uh, we can write it in terms of bromine as well. So last on the last slide we wrote it in terms of potassium. We can write it in terms of bromine. All right, so for every one mole of bromine molecules you have, uh, two moles of KBr are formed. So you can write that as one molecule of bromine or one mole of bromine for every two moles of potassium bromide. Or you can 
flip it, right? It's a conversion factor. They are equivalent amounts. You can flip it uh, and have two potassium bromides per every one bromine molecule. Okay, so uh, here's a problem for us to work on. Uh, is to balance the following reaction. It says to use the law of conservation of mass to check your answer. Uh, and so if balancing equations, we've been doing this. Uh, so the first step is to write it in a skeleton equation if it's not already, but it's been done for us here. Uh, so that step is already done. Next step is to count the number of atoms present on each side. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, and then we've got one sodium on the product. Looks like we got three hydrogen and one oxygen. Okay, so step uh, right where now we need to balance it. Uh, suggestions always not to start with hydrogen or oxygen, but to do those last if possible. Uh, but in this instance, our sodiums are already balanced, so we got to start with one of these other two. Uh, the oxygens are balanced, which means we got to work on the hydrogens. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a 2 in front of the water and that's going to give us 4 hydrogens total on the reactant side. Uh, it now also gives us 2 total oxygens on the reactant side. Uh, to balance out the oxygens over on the product side, right, we want to make the number of oxygens now too. Well, the only place you can do that is right here. Okay, so we'll do that, uh, which gives us now two oxygens. But that also affected the total number of sodiums. All right, uh, and it also affected the total number of hydrogens. Now we've got four total hydrogens. And it looks like our hydrogens are balanced and our oxygens are balanced. The only thing left to do is to balance the sodium. So all we have to do is put a 2 in front of the sodium in the reactants. Okay, so there's our balanced uh, equation. All right, so we'll write our values in there. Okay, uh, now what we need to do is to check to make sure uh, that all of our coefficients are correct. So... Uh, the way to do this, uh, my suggestion is, uh, is to take our coefficients and write those as moles. Okay, uh, And what we're going to do is we're going to add up the mass on each side using the molar mass. And the molar mass of sodium is 22.99 grams of it per every one mole of sodium. So this will give us grams of sodium on the reactant side. Uh, all right, uh, and that value, we calculate it here. It's going to come out at 45.98 grams of sodium. Okay, uh, we've got two moles of H2O. Okay, times its molar mass of 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of water. Okay, and that's going to give us 36.04 grams of water. So my total mass of the reactants, okay, this is simply just adding these two together. And that would give us 82.02 grams in the reactants. Now let's check to make sure our products uh, have the same mass. So, uh, looks like we've got 2 moles of NaOH times the molar mass there, Okay, which is exactly 40, 40.00 40 grams of sodium hydroxide per every one mole of it. Okay, uh, and that would give us 80.00 grams of sodium hydroxide. Okay, uh, we've got one 
mole of hydrogen gas times the molar mass of 2.02 .02 grams of H2 for every one mole of it. Uh, and that's going to give us 2.02 .02 grams of H2. All right, well, sure enough, we add these together, 82.02 .02 grams in the products. And sure enough, my mass is conserved. Uh, the Again, most important part of that was our conversion factors, knowing what our number of moles are, okay, right, coming from our coefficients up front. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't be able to determine uh, that, in fact, our mass in the reactants and products is equivalent. Okay. So, a uh, similar type of problem here, and determine the possible mole ratio. So here what we're going to do, same thing, uh, balance the equation first. We've got one zinc, one oxygen, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. Other side we got one zinc, looks like we got one oxygen, two hydrogens, and two chlorines. So, uh, we'll start with everything that's not hydrogen and oxygen. So zinc is balanced, they both have one. Chlorine is not. So this needs to become two, so we'll put a two in front of the HCl in the reactants. That also affected the hydrogens. Now you've got two hydrogens. Okay, uh, and sure enough, just doing that right there, that balanced our equation. Okay, we've got equivalent numbers of atoms of each element. So. Uh, now, just to determine the possible ratios was what we were talking about earlier. Okay. So we'll balance it up top there. Uh, our possible ratios are, let's say we had one mole of zinc oxide. Okay. That would be the same as having two moles of HCl. Okay. Or one mole of zinc oxide is also the same as one mole of zinc chloride, okay? Uh, or one mole of zinc oxide is also the same as one mole of water. Okay, so that's all the possibilities there. Uh, we could have two moles of HCl for every one mole of zinc oxide. We could have two moles of HCl per every one mole of zinc chloride. You can have two moles of HCl for every one mole of water. Okay. Uh, another possibility here. Right. Every one, whoops, let's go back. It won't let me, will it? Okay, so for every one mole of zinc chloride, we can have one mole of zinc oxide, right? One mole of zinc chloride can be the same as two moles of HCl, okay? Or one mole of zinc chloride can be the same as one mole of water, okay? Uh, and the last possibility there is that one mole of water is equivalent to one mole of zinc oxide, one mole of water is the same as two moles of hydrogen chloride, HCl, uh, or one mole of H2O is equivalent to one mole of zinc chloride. Okay, uh, and what you can start to notice is that some of these will overlap, all right, uh, for example, uh, are one mole of zinc oxide equivalent to one mole uh, of zinc chloride. Okay, so if we went down uh, here, okay, those two are the same. All right, so uh, already we, we can see that happening. Uh, but these are all the possible, okay, all the possible mole ratios. These are going to be incredibly important going into next week, and it will be helpful for your homework for this evening.